Hello, welcome to Mr. J Build School, and I hope you're having a wonderfully sublime day. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to terraform, which is a technique of forming the ground to how you need it for whatever you're building. Maybe a fancy castle, maybe just be a house, may pretty much be anything. And but I will be showing you how to terraform, and also be showing you the basics of wireframing, uh, which you can pretty much use for almost anything. However, they are me using it for or for terraforming. Okay, so the first step in terraforming is wireframing, and um, in this video, I actually show you the proper way of wireframing more towards the end, uh, which I will tell you when that is, which is uh, more towards the end. However, don't skip ahead because there's still I'm still doing a bit of wireframing here. So in this one, uh, at this part of the video, I am sort of planning out where my pathway is going to be. Um, I was imagining a house on top of some form of a mountain or a cliff face. Now, if you're planning out a city, then you're probably going to have to plan out your roads first. Or if you're planning out that you want a house on top of your mountain or your hill, you need to make sure that you have a pathway set up. Having a pathway set up will really help you be able to make sure that you can walk on your pathway and it actually works. Unlike if you just built your ter terraforming first. If you did that, then you would not be able to really plan it out properly and uh, you wouldn't be able to really go up on top of the hill as easily. Or if it's a mountain especially, it's very difficult to make a pathway on a mountain unless you have the mountain planned out first. So if we continue on, now you can see that I have did a little um, thing surrounding the pathway to make it look like the pathway is inset a little bit into the mountain, which is more realistic in my opinion and also just makes it look better in general because it adds a bit more interest in the, in some cases, depth depending on the scale. So on the outside of that, there's going to be a whole lot of curves. Now obviously, whenever you're first starting out, don't expect yourself to be able to make perfect curves when you're first starting out. I still can't make perfect curves, um, but obviously you get better with the more you practice your terraforming, the more you build, you'll just get naturally better. But still, you should definitely make sure that you do your curves pretty decently well whenever you're first starting out because then you get just get used to doing those curves. Um, but don't stress out over it too much. Um, you'll just get better at it naturally, so you don't really have to stress out. Um, as you can see, I'm just uh, doing a bit of wireframing, a little bit, where I'm just extending it and then filling in in between, which is pretty much what wireframing is. Um, but for something like this, I should have planned out the whole entire thing using wireframing and then filled it in. Um, but for me, I don't really need to do that as much. I was just, this is basically how I terraform if I was going to build something like a city or maybe a fantasy castle on top of beer, something like that. This is pretty much what I would do. So this is not generally uh, what you should do when you're first starting out. It's still good to watch this because then you can see the steps. Um, but later on, I do show you the more um, refi less refined version and less um, less like more beginner friendly. So as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of wireframing where I'm planning out each layer, uh, which is pretty much what you do with um, the beginner version of terraforming. However, I already had a perfect picture of what I wanted my terraforming to look like, so I didn't exactly um, need to plan it out nearly as much. Um, which really does help to plan, like, sort of think about what you want to look like in your head and then try to execute it. Uh, for me, that was easy in this case. However, for you guys, that might be a little bit more difficult. So don't stress if you can't get it to look exactly how you want. And as we continue on, you can see that I uh, make it look a bit more interesting as if it was going to go up. Sort of like um, that part is also a hill and it's going to go up. I could sort of see it pretty clearly as, like, as if it's like a really big cliff face. And you see like a spiraling grass path all the way up to the top or something. As we continue on, you can sort of see that I'm just really quickly filling in. It's not too important. As well as just doing these little stre like like lines. As if I'm planning it out, but I'm planning it out where I do one line, fill it in. Do the next line, fill it in. If you want to make sure that your terraforming is going to look really nice, then I would recommend planning every line out all just plan the whole entire thing out with a bunch like a, a bunch of tear like wireframe lines and make like a grid make a massive grid of terraforming 
which is what you're more or less supposed to do for massive projects. Uh, that's probably what I would do if I was doing a massive project. Now, for this thing, it's so small, even if I did make a mistake, uh, which I probably did, I just didn't notice. Uh, even if I did make a mistake, it would not be very noticeable, or it would not even be a mistake, because you wouldn't be able to tell, because it's just such a small, small scale. Now, for larger things, you have to add a lot more detail to it. It's just, I'll have to show you how to plan out large builds later on, like large, massive terraforms. So as you can see right now, I am sort of doing like a bit of a circle for another layer of terraform, um, which is sort of like how the pathway works with the, the inset. Having those little bit of walls of stone um, really makes it look like there's a lot more depth and it's bigger than it is, adds a lot of space so you can add houses and other things. It just generally looks really, really nice in my opinion. Um, but obviously, you don't add those little cliff faces on everything. I mean, obviously, you don't have a, just a massive cliff all made of cliff faces unless you're doing some Mayan or um, Native American, something like you see in South America where they have those farms uh, on the mountain. I mean, that's the only time you'll probably ever see a, like a bunch of these cliff faces. Um, however, there are a lot of cliff faces like that in real life, but um, obviously you don't want to spam it. Um, so... You can sort of see a 360 view right now. This is pretty much what we got so far. Um, it's looking pretty good so far. You know, have a little pathway and a walkway up to some greenery. And probably be another walkway um, with some greenery, greenery, more greenery on the right side. As you can see, uh, this is what it sort of looks like when you're walking up the mountain or the hill or whatever this is. Most likely some form of a either a really massive hill or a mountain. As we continue on, um, uh, you can start seeing me finish that circle. <laughs> I haven't finished yet. Oh, okay, there we go. Finish the circle. And you can see that I keep editing it until it looks right. Uh, that's one reason why you wireframe is because you want to make sure it looks right. Now, uh, this is only one layer of wireframing, so it didn't really matter if I edited it later. However, if it's something that's 3D and massive, you want to make sure it looks right first. Uh, but for this one, I can just easily remove a layer until I get the right shape that I want. Which is pretty much what I did. I just kept editing it until I got the right shape. I even lowered that down since I didn't want to raise the stone up because then it would be too large. So I lowered it down to make it look more like a hill, um, to make the terraforming look more interesting. I like the grass, not like just the terraforming in general, but the grass. Um, the grass seemed a bit too flat, so I added a bit of a hill. Um, so... The ways you detail this, which I forgot to describe this, the ways you detail this are by adding texture and shape. Shape and texture and color. Shape, texture, and color are the main details of terraforming. So whenever you texture something, you're adding interest to it. And whenever you have an interesting shape, it makes it look more detailed. Um, so pretty much for this, the detailing is the shape itself. You also have this with houses. Um, which is something that's a really powerful tool is if you make an interesting shape it will look detailed even if it's not very detailed even if you don't even have any texture as long as it has an interesting shape it'll look detailed um, but obviously that does not work in all cases um, you can't make your terraforming always interesting you can only do that on more specific builds like you're just building a scene but if you're building a city you can't make the whole entire city's like terraforming look interesting like the whole entire city on a cliff face that would not make any sense unless it's some sort of fantasy village or yeah i mean like a scene as i said uh sort of more some like uh, you're planning a scene it's more like a painting almost um, but this right here is just more for more average terraforming now you can sort of see me going around and starting in on detailing a few things not really like detailing but finalizing the shape um, which pretty much right here is the final shape of everything. Now I'm starting in on actually showing you how to um, wireframe more effectively. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be worried about the shape right here because you can always edit it afterwards. So this is not exactly what I would like the shape to have been. That just looks too diagonal. But as you can see, me placing the stone right now 
I'm literally just spamming right through it, going as fast as possible, and then finalizing it afterwards, as, as you can see right here, until it's pretty much almost a perfect curve. It's a 3D line, so it's quite difficult to do at, for your first time. And in fact, I'll show you, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to do that um, in the next episode. So if you wanna sort of see how um, those lines are made up and what makes a 3D line, why is it 3D, then I will show you. Um, but this is sort of like, as I said, a grid. You can sort of see that grid. So this is more of like a bunch of squares instead of triangles. You can actually do it with triangles and it does work quite well with triangles. However, I just prefer um, the squares in this one right here. Now, if it was a mountain, it might be better with triangles because a uh, mountain is more triangular. So if you want to make it look more like a mountain, you might use triangles. If you want to make it more, look more like the object you're trying to portray, make it the shape that you're trying to make um, or make it sort of something like that sort of like that's actually how they generate real mountains in movies is they use a bunch of triangles overlaid over and over and over again um, but yeah this is about the end of it now you can see sort of a short overlay of pretty much how this works um, that's pretty much how you terraform I hope you have a fantastically wonderful day sublime all that type of jazz and this is what we're gonna be doing in the next video which is circles and diagonals and 3d lines and why they are 3d i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed the last video and i hope you are going to use this information to create some fantastic builds